and she just walks around all day with just music in her head. She doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking, analyzing, trying to figure out what's next, what's happening next. I'm thinking of 10 things. She's just got unicorns and songs and <laughs> rainbows in her head. Though. And it's great. Like it's the total opposite of me. Like com completely 100% the complete opposite, you know? And, and I, and I dig it. I dig it. Kasi ito lagi ko tong nakikita. If you're friends with Teacher Cat on Instagram, lagi niya sinasabi, itaas ang bandila ng mga Pilipina. Raise your flag. Actually, on my previous vlog in Baracay, sinabi niya yon. So, do you think you raised the flag of the Philippines well? And did you represent our country in the international scene very well? <laughs> Feeling ko. Feeling ko nagawa ko naman. Oo. <laughs> Feeling ko nagawa ko naman. <laughs> Uh-oh. Pero can, matatanong uh, si Neil. Can, can we ask Neil? Is this Neil? Can we have to say, say hi to Neil? Hi, Neil! Because there's a question for you. So you have to... This is Neil. Hi, Neil! Hi, hi Neil! Hi, hello. Neil! Yeah, so that's Neil. He's the foreigner that is the significant other of Teacher Cat. And we have a question uh, here. Do you think Teacher Cat represent... Um, represent the country well, being a Filipina. It's like, how is it like being in a relationship with the Filipina? And how can you compare it with, you know, with your own ethnicity? What's the difference between them? So, she absolutely does not represent the Philippines well. <laughs> um, I, the reason the reason I came to the Philippines is... I just said that. Yeah, it's my best friend. He said, hey, come to the Philippines. The women are beautiful. They're nice. They're considerate. They cook well. It's great. So I came here and I got a broken one. She's just broken. She doesn't cook, doesn't clean. She's very mean to me. She makes me cook all the meals. All of them. All of them. I mean, yeah, well done. You know, she makes me cook. She makes me clean. I have to take care of her kids. I'm just the yaya. I'm the yaya. And I'm the <laughs> and I pay for everything. So basically, it's the worst possible scenario, which means she's just like the women in America. Exactly the same. It's a Cali girl. Like, it's. Yeah. So it's like, it's like the same American girl. Well, with your current relationship, will you recommend um, to your foreign friends dating a Filipina? I would recommend to my foreign friends to date a Filipina. I would not recommend to my foreign friends to date Katrina. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's incredible. Like, in the company I used to work for, they now have an office here. Of, let's say, in that company, and from my former life, I have 10 very good friends. I think seven of them came over here, met a Filipina, got married, and it, you know, they're all extremely happy. So, of course, I would recommend it to other people. I would just be more choosy next time. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying it, but, but you know, like, so to, to most foreigners, hey, it's the land of opportunity. But sometimes you miss, you know. Like, Why are you staying with Katrina if she's broken? What made you say that? What made you say that? Oh, this is, you know, a defective one, but I'm staying with her. COVID, uh, lack of options. So, you know, basically <laughs> COVID hit. I was stuck. You know, you can't go on dates. You can't, like, go out and meet new people. So, you know, just, 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 you met my yeah, just a lack of, op just a lack of options, basically. You met my family. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, my, I met her family. They kind of took me in as a, as you know like i'm adopted they actually like me more than her it's not close really they like me a lot more than her uh but yeah basically just covid you know covid messes everything up uh lack of options i can't travel you know you can't really meet new people can't go out so i always tell her don't ask me a question unless you want to know the answer if it's a don't ask a question you don't want to know the answer to because if the answer is bad i'm still going to tell you the answer so you know, you asked me, I answered. So, are you are you planning to go back to your country of origin, Neil, anytime soon once COVID ends? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I've been here for like two and a half years. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, before I 
before I moved here, I, I had a business. I sold my business. I'd never lived in Asia before. I lived in Europe and South America and all these other places, but I never lived in Asia. So I was like, this is next. I've got a friend over here. Let's come over here. So I've been here for about two and a half years, having, you know, no job, just, just living life. And I don't know, the day to day is getting a little boring. I, uh, I think I need to start working again to give myself something to do. So, um, I've currently got a couple of interviews in the States lined up and, uh, yeah, once, once I land one of those, I'll probably head back. Um, it's so, not 100%, but probably. So what are your future plans? Like it's going to be a long distance or is Katrina coming with you? Are you talking about it? Um, somehow? I, I plan to, to bring her with me at first, you know, until uh, I kind of make the transition and then I'll probably try to upgrade, you know, and just, <laughs> just yeah, yeah, younger. Yeah, younger, you know, and, and, and then I'll call, uh, I'll call immigration and tell her that, you know, she's overstayed her visa and they'll come get her. <laughs> hey, in the States, we have a, what's that? We have a, you, you told me, like in the States when they ask my age. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. 26. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a reputation up. Well, ten, you know? ten years, ten years younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and if I could get away with twenty-four, I would, but eh, I don't think they believe it. So, <laughs> you know, twenty-six is about right. Twenty-six is about right. So, so, what do you love about Cat, and how did you get the approval of you know Cat's best friend? Okay, the the thing I like about Cat, and so I was in a relationship slash married for seventeen years. Okay, and it was, and I didn't know it at the time because she was the first woman I'd ever been with. She's the first girl, you know, first serious girlfriend. And I didn't know it at the time, but she was boring and everything we did was boring and it was awful. So when that finally ended, she ended it, not me, but but it finally ended. Um, it turns out that I like crazy girls. Like, it's just more fun. Like, it, you know, they're super high most of the time, but then they're super low and, and and they're just always happy or super sad but usually have like way more happy than you should be and i'm the most boring even kill i don't get excited about anything type of guy <laughs> and if i tell her hey we're having this thing for dinner she gets so happy and she's like, like the other day when it was brown out yeah <laughs> and, and the energy of the trick that was really and she just walks around all day with just music in her head. She doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking, analyzing, trying to figure out what's next, what's happening next. I'm thinking of 10 things. She's just got unicorns and songs <laughs> and rainbows in her head. The whole and it's great. Like it's the total opposite of me. Like com completely, 100% the complete opposite, you know? And and I, and I dig it. I dig it. I, I, I found that once I got divorced, I like hippies, even though I hate hippie men. I love hippie girls because they're just kind of out there and it's the opposite of me. So I don't get enjoyment from a lot of things. Like I said, I don't get excited, but I enjoy giving her first experiences, but she just loves them. And I can glean some joy from her overabundance of it. So uh, that's, that's, you know, I guess that's the main thing that really draws me to her. Uh, as far as her best friend's concerned, so basically her best friend hates Americans, right? She just hates them. Uh, maybe she's had bad experiences, and most Americans are kind of buttholes, you know? They, they, they think too much of themselves, which I'm kind of that way too, but in a different way. Uh, but anyway, so she basically asked me out. She's like, hey, I'm going out for a drink with my friend. It's in BGC by where you live. You want to just come and hang out? I'm like, sure. So she brings this friend along who just hates Americans, hates them. And I kind of got that vibe. So I had to, you know, like use the words and plus I got them a little drunk, you know. Uh, and yeah, so once the friend that hates Americans figured out that she was a big fan of mine, yeah, it was already over. Like I, I was in. Um, it was basically the alcohol. But, but you know. Yeah, so that's how I got her uh, her best friend's approval, even though she said you cannot date an American. Then she was like, okay, maybe this one's all right. And also the um, ice cream sandwich in Elephant Brown. Oh, uh, for, for the other best friend? Well, the other best friend was easy. I just had to feed her. <laughs> it was like, divine. Yeah, it was divine's divine. question. Yeah, divine's question. I just had to feed her. As soon as I fed her, she was good. Like, 
<laughs> so, so I know who is the key. Who is the yeah. key? <laughs> for feeding one, the best. For the first one, feeding the, the best first friend. One was alcohol. The second one was food. So, you know. A lot of reactions here from the audience. They really love Neil. You're so frank. <laughs> you said you asked me a question. I'm gonna tell you the answer. I mean, you know, and, and a lot of the things I've said have been a little, you know, a little too, you know, ex not not extreme, but you know, in partially in jest. I mean, maybe I, I overstated a few of the things about her. About you know, she's she's not a good Filipina and all that good stuff. And and I, I think people know that it was in jest. But for the most part, there's an underlying truth. You know, I mean. It, it, Maybe I said a little too much, but <laughs> there's an underlying truth. I think the number one rule if you're dating a foreigner, if you're dating an Assam, you should not too sensitive with your feelings. Mm -hmm. Because if you're too sensitive, then you're always gonna cry. What? <laughs> you're the you're the mean one. My friend, when I came over here, he said, "Whatever you do when you get over there, don't be kind of you know like you pick on them and stuff." <laughs> They, they might misinterpret that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be chill. <laughs> the day I met her, she starts talking mess. Like, nonstop being mean. And I'm like, Wait, that's that's rude. And, but, yeah, I'm the one that's insensitive. Oh, yeah. But the, the one the, the one one thing that we had to go through some uh, uh, words. Language. Language barrier. barrier. We always say that language barrier. That was the topic earlier. Yeah, there, there, there's a certain language barrier. And one of the, our, our first ones that I found humorous was so I would say, because I, I, I cooked a little bit before I came over here, but she loves to eat, so I learned to cook. And I would be wow. like, hey, tonight I'm going to cook this. And she would say, oh, oh. But, I said that yeah, earlier. Yeah. Oh, you already said that? Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, but in the States, uh-uh is no. And she would say, oh, oh. And I'm like, but why don't you want that? That sounds good. But yeah, that was that was a, a funny one. But I guess mm -hmm. she already told you that, so never mind. Yeah, one of the one of the good things about the language barrier is when she's speaking to her friends or to her family, they always speak in Tagalog. So I don't understand mm -hmm. what they're saying, which I actually find to be a blessing because I don't think I'd want to know anyway. And it would just clutter up my mind. So I'm, I'm actually really happy that I can't understand her when she speaks to her friends. So, you know, that's actually a plus, not a minus. Um, any advice to Filipinas who want to date foreigners like you? There's not really one thing. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, we are open. I think, I think a lot of foreigners, if they're over here for, depending on how long, as soon as they get here, they want to experience the culture, if you know what I mean. And, uh, and since they're over here for the first time, and it seems to me like when I walk around and when I, when I used to go to Publishon, the white guys are kind of targeted you know like the, the, the girls see a white guy uh, maybe they see a dollar sign maybe they see a way out i don't know but they're kind of targeted so guys take advantage of that um so maybe if you actually want to have a relationship instead of just hooking up with a, a fam you should wait a little bit to get intimate because if they're willing to wait then they're willing to maybe you know for them it's not just a hookup they might actually want yes. something more. But if they're not willing to wait, then they're just trying to, you know, sample the local delicacies. So, so don't I, be I, easy it, in short. We should not be easy. Yeah, because because that's like whenever I've had friends come over and I know whenever my friends have friends come over, since they are kind of the exotic one here, then they just want to try to sleep with a bunch of girls. And, you know, if... if if you want something more, and if you just want to hook up with an Afal, just go ahead and have fun. But if you want something more, I actually think you should wait a little thank bit. Thank you I mean, so much, Niels, for that very, very good advice. And it's really nice having with you here. You're such a bomb, Niels. So thank you so much. And I'll go back to the ladies. I'll talk to you guys later. Neil. Bye, Niels. Yes. Bye. Bye, Niels. Bye. Yes, yes, yes.